Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. This week we're going to cover the Glock G45 MOS, but before we jump right into the G45, some history is needed. In 2011, the U.S. Army and Air Force announced its intent to conduct weapons trials in an effort to determine the replacement for its aging current sidearm inventory, consisting predominantly of the Beretta 92-based M9 service pistol. In 2013, requests for information were issued to allow for research in the currently available handgun technologies as well as industrial production capabilities. Some items of consideration included caliber and power specifications, the ability for adaptability to allow for a single weapons platform to be used effectively by people of variable stature, as the current M9 was found to really not be the most ergonomically diverse. Also to be considered was the ability to utilize light, laser, and suppressor systems. Due to the volume of feedback, both from industry as well as from various government branches, the weapons trials were delayed until 2015, with anticipated selection to be made in 2017. There were 12 pistols entered into the competition from a variety of manufacturers, including Beretta, SIG, FN, CZ, Smith & Wesson, and Glock. SIG ultimately won the competition, and as is usually the case in these evaluations, it was a controversial decision. One of the Glock entries was subsequently rolled out into the civilian market as the Glock 19X. It's essentially a hybrid of the G19's shorter slide and the full-size grip of the G17 and comes in coyote tan, the specified color for the military trials. Even though it was released in 2017, it's not a Gen 5 and does not have all the upgrades that that brings with it. Also, it's limited on what magazines will work with it and it's not compatible with the current Gen 5 magazines. Despite this, it's proven to be one of Glock's best sellers. As a consequence, Glock utilized the same hybrid design idea and developed the G45. The G45 was released in 2018 and is essentially a Gen 5 version of the 19X. Like the 19X, it features the shorter slide of the G19 combined with the full-size grip from the G17, including the modular backstrap system. It has slide serrations on both the front and back to allow for easy slide manipulation and has a flared magazine well to allow for rapid magazine changes. It has an ambidextrous slide stop lever and the magazine release can be swapped for right or left hand configuration. It has a built-in accessory rail and comes with the Glock Marksman barrel. In May of 2019, Glock released the G45 at its MOS or Modular Optics System configuration. This system allows you to mount a variety of sighting systems onto the slide without requiring custom machine work. Let's take a closer look. And as always the case, before working on any firearm, we want to make sure that we are clear and safe of any ammunition. Magazine is empty. And chamber is empty. So we're safe to start looking at the controls and features of the Glock 45. The Glock 45 is a double action only striker fired 9mm. Of course we have our trigger here. The middle blade is part of their safety system. You have to disengage or depress the blade before the trigger itself can be pressed. Uh, that's part of the safety feature. It prevents the firearm from inadvertently firing if the firearm is dropped from an inertia firing from the, the weight of the trigger or from accidentally the trigger getting caught on something. It has to be a purposeful press of the trigger including that center blade. Of course we have the magazine release here. Operates in the standard fashion. You would simply just push in and that releases the magazine. It is able to be switched to the other side so uh, ambidextrous uh, ability. We have the slide stop here. On the last round, there's a notch there in the slide. And then on the last round, the shelf right there on the magazine will push against that lever on the last round and it will lock into that latch on the slide, which then locks the slide back. To release the slide, you'd simply push down on either one of those slide release buttons and that would release the slide. This is the takedown button here. It's one on each side. Those are used to disassemble the firearm. And for disassembly, first you want to remove the magazine. You want to double check to make sure we are empty. Then point it in a safe direction and pull the trigger. The trigger will stay back. That releases the spring tension off of the striker assembly. 
then you would want to push the slide back just slightly and that removes the spring tension off of the disassembly button. Again, those buttons are on both sides. So I'll just move the slide back just slightly. Then you push down on those buttons and then the slide will come forward and off. So on the frame, of course we have our rails right there, the metal rails that engage on the slide. This is our ejector this is our sear right there that engages right there the striker striker slash firing pin this is the disconnector right there when this it's kind of hard to see right there when the slide comes back it pushes in on that and that disconnects the trigger from the sear and then so that it remains as a semi-automatic function uh, this button right here is part of the their safety uh, assembly. When the trigger is pulled back, that button lifts up, and what that does is it pushes in on that section right there. We'll look at that in just a moment. So as far as cleaning, you would want to clean the rail sections, clean any you know dirt and grime and grit that's everywhere, and then give it a light coating of, of oil for lubrication. And it's really as far as you need to disassemble this for a routine field strip and cleaning. The Glock uh, has a, a huge aftermarket of upgrades and you know uh, enhanced parts that can be put in there to change the, the, the trigger and uh, in, increase uh, just user ability to, to, for operation. The Gen 5 has a lot of those enhancements already kind of built in, so I would really encourage you to try the trigger assembly before you go start replacing components. I think you'll find that the trigger on it's already really nice as it is out of the box. So. That's just pretty much it as far as the frame goes. On the slide, we have our dual recoil spring right there. To remove that, you would simply push forward and then just lift up. So there again, just push forward, lift up, and then that comes out. The barrel is in the locked position currently. It locks via the squared off shoulders and everything uh, into the slide. So to remove it, you would simply lift it up and lift it out. Uh, some other components of the slide now. Uh, this is that button that I mentioned part uh, as before as part of their safety feature. Uh, that actually blocks the striker slash firing pin from being able to come all the way through. So when you pull the trigger, one of the safety features is it would then push in on that so that when the sear is released, the firing pin can then come all the way through, see if you can see that, and fire the weapon. If that's not pushed in, the firing pin won't come all the way through. See there, and it comes all the way through. So there again, that's the striker assembly that the seer catches on. There's our ejector, it's an external ejector. The plunger right there and the spring is inside the slide and it would come out of the back uh, as well as the striker firing pin assembly would slide out of the back. This cover plate comes off and that's how those would be removed and it's uh, pretty easy to remove all of that. Uh, you don't need to for general field strip and, and cleaning purposes. It would just be really if you really need to full detail clean it or if you're going to replace some components. There's uh, that little U-shape right there that's cut into the slide that this uh, striker and firing pin is in and it's kind of hard to see because you know it's black on black oh there we go that section right there and it's actually a plastic kind of like a tube that goes over the striker firing pin assembly you would push forward on that and then that would disengage from the back cover and then the cover could be lifted out and then the striker firing pin can slide out of the back as well as the, the spring and plunger assembly for the extractor. So as far as cleaning, you'd want to clean all the rails on the slide, clean all the surfaces here, clean out the chamber face, and just basically you know give everything a nice scrub down and then a light coating of oil for lubrication. And that's really as far as you, you generally need to disassemble this. Now, on that MOS 
portion, this top section, you can see the line right there. Of course, it goes all the way around. That plate with those two screws would come off. And then there's a variety of replacement plates that come with the firearm. And you would pick the plate that aligns with your red dot sight. Uh, for example, I've got this Holo Sun right here to 507. 507C, this is in the, the green, this is their Elite Series. And you would pick the plate that this attaches to. This plate would replace this trim or cover plate. And then once that's on there, then the red dot sight would screw onto the plate. Now, in this particular one, it uses this number two right here as far as the plate that it would use. And in operation, you would just get the proper Torx size and go ahead and remove those screws and then you can remove that top plate you put the new cover plate on and it comes with a variety of screws depending on which plate you're using and everything else is what screws the cover plate on. And once you have the cover plate, you have the alignment holes, put them in the corresponding alignment holes on your red dot sight. And then you would use the appropriate size screw. And then that would put the red dot onto the slide. So that's all set up. Now, you don't have to have the slide off the firearm to do that. I was just doing it here for just for illustration purposes. So as far as uh, reassembly of the slide itself, first thing is go ahead and put the barrel in. Put it in its locked down position. That's where it's up here. So it's into the, the full recess there. Put your spring in and plunger tube, and then just push in and then down to make sure it's fully in, in its saddle, like so. Align the rail sections on the slide with the rail sections on the frame. And then pull back and it locks in place. Do a function test, go ahead and pull the trigger, hold the trigger down, let the slide go forward and then make sure the trigger resets. Go ahead and try it again. As you can see on that and then it will reset right there. And we're all reassembled with our red dot attached. Once I had the red dot installed, I went out to the range and made a few sighting adjustments then tried it out.
This was my first outing with the reflex sight on a pistol in this configuration, and I have to admit it does take some getting used to. It requires some changes in how you present the pistol to acquire the sight picture, and I clearly need some more practice at it. But overall, I'm happy with the setup, and I will enjoy shooting it. I hope that this information is of value, and if you liked the video, I would ask that you hit the like button, and subscribe and hit the notify button if you want to continue to see more like this. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.